You know what you're listening to? You're listening to the Dean team bringing the light of Islam right into your hearts. Follow us on Facebook at the Dean Team Sydney Radio Program and subscribe to our YouTube channel, Dean Team Sydney. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والصلاة والسلام على المبعوث رحمة للعالمين محمد بن عبد الله وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين للسنز السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته And welcome to another episode you're listening to the Dean Team with you today your brother in Islam Malaz Majani and I have with me Mazin Assalamu alaikum ya Mazin Alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh Mr. Malaz how are you? Alhamdulillah rabbil alameen It's always good to have you with us Mazin Allah it's uh, and uh, how, how are you, Mazin? Well, I've been very well, alhamdulillah. It's, uh, it's been a very busy time, but uh, never too busy to spend time with you and talk about the greatest of things to talk about, which is Allah Azza wa Jal. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. I mean, subhanAllah, everyone's busy these days, Mazin. I mean, everyone complains, I'm busy, I'm busy, I'm busy, I don't have time, I don't have time. But um, subhanAllah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala works in mysterious ways. I mean, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives us blessing in time. Gives us blessing in money, gives us blessing in wealth, in children, and that subhanahu wa ta'ala can be the solution to our business. Subhanallah. But alhamdulillah, I mean, as in, uh, each person needs to find the, the you know a, a way to get closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to reprioritize his life so that he's never too busy for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's that's the aim of the game. That's what we uh, it's the balancing act, right? And uh, that's the, that's what we need to get good at, you know, get better at. Um, balancing with between all these responsibilities that we have and realizing that you know the deen is not something that we you know um, uh, make time you know that we sort of sleep in whenever we've got time it's actually that we need to make time for it we need to revolve our life around the deen and not the deen around our life subhanallah Allah, very very well said Mazin. and this is i mean it's really about reprioritizing and, and really asking yourself what's really important i mean if 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 i knew that my last day would be tomorrow or next week how would I reschedule my life? What would I spend my time on? What, how, how would I, what, what would be my concerns and things like that? Subhanallah. Very Subhanallah. True. You know, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, Kullu ibn Adam khattaa, wa khayru khattaa'ina tawabun. That every single one of the son of Adam is a sinner. And the best amongst these sinners are the ones that repent and return to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Subhanallah, Malaz. You know what I really love about that? Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is already telling you up front, you know, no matter what your level of you know, what your level in the deen is, it's really irrelevant because he's telling you up front that we know you're going to make mistakes, you know, as the representative of this deen, as, you know, inspired by Allah Azza wa Jal, we know that you're going to make mistakes, we know that you're going to sleep, we know that you're going to fall over and have moments of weakness every now and then. And and this is, you know, what, what, what you were saying. He says that every son of Adam, and obviously that includes the daughters of Adam, they are sinners. They fall into they fall into sin. They they have moments of weak of weakness where they do things which they shouldn't do, and the best of so you know we've already established that we're all sinners, right? Um, and then the best of those, he's given us the way out. He's the best of those are those that repent. So there's a way out, you know. And this is the beauty of Islam is that there's no there's always that light at the end of the tunnel. There's always a a, a lifeline for you. And in this particular hadith, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has given us that lifeline. Is no matter what we do, there's that way out of, you know, to repent basically. SubhanAllah. And I mean, we all have sin in our life, Mazin. I mean, everyone's got that little thing that they, they do or, you know, it might, might be inability to lower the gaze. It might be that they lie or they backbite or, or they talk about people. Or, or they, they're just simply like heedless of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They miss their prayers or whatever it may be. Everyone has sin in their life. SubhanAllah. All of us have sin in our life and we really need to return to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And, and subhanAllah, you, you find Mazin, there's no, there's no specific time to repent to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The best time to repent to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is now. Because this is the only opportunity that you can guarantee. No one can guarantee that you have an opportunity till tomorrow, till next week, till next Ramadan, till Hajj, or till Friday, wherever, wherever it may be. But everyone has the guarantee that they have now, the time that they have now. And they must return to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala now. Because wallahi, I mean, no one's sure whether they'll survive or, or they will be alive for, for, for days, weeks, months, and so forth. So now is the time to return to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yeah, we definitely should not be um, tricked or fooled by this concept that we have of time where... You know, we think that we're going to, we, we live as if we're not, we're never going to die. We know it's going to happen, you know, and this is the scary part or the, 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 the ridic ridiculous part is that we know. And, you know, if someone says, uh, yeah, of course I know I'm going to die. Everyone dies. But 
the problem is we don't live as if we know this. We live as if we're going to live forever, and we act as if we're going to live forever, and then we know we never take advantage of the moment that is now to repent. You know, it's, it's one of the tricks of the shaitan. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, يَعِدُهُمْ وَيُمَنِّيهِمْ That the shaitan gives them promises and gives them these long, long hopes that they're going to be living forever and ever and ever and then they'll have... And the shaitan comes to you and tells you, don't worry, you'll return to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tomorrow or in Ramadan or when you go to Hajj. And he gives you this illusion that you're living forever and ever and ever. And, and then he, he, he wants you to stay away from the rooms of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He wants you to stay away from the repentance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's his, it's his big trick, the shaitan. Subhan, that's a trick, isn't it? Because it doesn't say, no, don't do it. He just says, look, you've got time, do it later. Just have some fun now. Subhanallah. Wallahi, we, we have to you know, return to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and realize no matter how much sin in our life and no matter how big my sin is. You know, some people think that you know, I've sinned too much. I've done too much in my life. No one knows what I've done back in my jahiliyyah or you know, I've, I've done such and such and, and there's no way Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to forgive me for what I've done. I've done so much sin in my life and I've done the biggest of sins in my life and how is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala going to forgive me? But a Muslim, a believer should never think like that. Never ever should think like that because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgives sins regardless what they are. Subhanallah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgives all sins except shirk wa billah. Except associating anyone with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In fact, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran a beautiful verse in, in Surah Al Zumar. He says, قُلْ يَا عِبَادِيَ الَّذِينَ أَسْرَفُوا عَلَىٰ أَنفُسِهِمْ لَا تَقْنَطُوا مِنْ رَحْمَةِ اللَّهِ إِنَّ اللَّهَ يَغْفِرُ الذُّنُوبَ جَمِيعًا إِنَّهُ هُوَ الْغَفُورُ الرَّحِيمُ He says, he says Say, O my servants, who have transgressed against themselves by sinning and sinning and sinning, he says, do not despair of the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because indeed Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgives all the sins. Indeed, it is He who is forgiving. Indeed, it is He who is merciful subhanahu wa ta'ala. Subhanallah, this um, is such a beautiful verse, Malaz, because I know personally brothers and I've heard of brothers as well that, you know, we're in a state in their life where they thought, you know, there's no way back. You know, this is their, they're destined to be on the wrong side of the track forever you know because of all the bad things that they think they've done or, or of all the bad things that they've done with that they think they can't be forgiven for and then a verse like this comes along you know and i know people that once they hear this doors open up for them and that realization that hang on there is a way out for me allah azawajal's mercy is bigger than my comprehension you know so there is a way out subhanallah and this gives a beautiful reminder that no matter what happens there's always as long as there's life in you, there's always a chance to return to Allah Azza wa Jal. You know, Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam tells in the hadith that Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala says, Inna rahmati taghlibu ghatibil. He says, Verily, my mercy prevailed over my wrath. SubhanAllah. And, and I mean, he also says in another narration, my, my mercy dominated over my wrath. That the mercy of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala is so big, it's so large, that it's so much bigger than His Ghadab Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. And we should never say that Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala will not forgive me, or my sins are too big for Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. You know, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives the example that He'll, give the, he'll forgive the, the sins even if the sins are as, as much as the froth of the ocean. Subhanallah. Subhanallah. This is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala what they're talking about. So no one should ever despair from the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and say that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will not forgive me. Subhanallah, man, that's talking about sins. Um, maybe before we go into uh, any further into the mercy of Allah azza wa jal and His forgiveness, um, maybe it's worthwhile talking about the different kinds of sins because you might hear... People might hear certain phrases like minor sins, major sins, uh, repentance, things like that. So it might be worthwhile just talking about the different aspects of it and understanding what the differences are. Uh, you know, so when it comes to sins, there are there are two types of sins. There's minor sins and major sins, and the scholars have categorized these sins um, in different ways. Um, there's differences of opinion, but mainly we can sort of to keep it simple. The minor sins would be things like, for instance, you know, the uh, unlawful gaze, you know, looking at something you shouldn't be looking at, for instance, swearing, getting angry, uh, uncontrollably angry, things like that. Things that are, you know, just bad character and bad actions to do um, in general. And these are, these are called, these are referred to as minor sins. And Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi taught us that the way to expiate or to, the way to wipe out those minor sins is to um, perform acts of worship. So in one hadith he says that between the, de between the daily prayers from one prayer to another and from Friday to Friday and from uh, Ramadan to Ramadan and from uh, Umrah I believe to Umrah, these are actions, these are worships that wipe out all the minor si all the sins that have occurred between them. 
and the majority of the scholars I understand actually um, say that this relates to the minor sins. So all of these acts of worship that you do, you know, you perform a good deed to wipe out a bad deed. So this is, you know, the minor sins. But we have to say here that if someone insists uh, and they know what they're doing is a sin, even though it's a minor sin, or even if it is a minor sin, if they insist on doing that and have no problem with doing that and they continue to do it, then that actually in itself becomes a major sin, to insist on, upon this minor sin. The other category is major sins. And now you, you do hear this a lot. And there's different numbers of sins. There's a hadith that mentions seven. But the scholars have actually gone and picked out, uh, categorized these major sins. And they've called them major sins because either Allah Azza wa Jal Himself has mentioned it as a major sin or as a sin that is uh, that has a specific punishment. Or Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has mentioned a specific punishment for it. Or Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has actually cursed the person that does this. So he's um, so this is what would classify as a major sin, and in that we're talking of you know things like for instance murder, um, uh, zina, fornication or adultery, um, you know uh, slandering and backbiting, uh, bribery, um, you know the uh, the um, leaders or the the rulers being unjust and oppressive. These are major sins, you know, leaving the battlefield. So these are, these are categorized as major sins. And the reason is, like I said, because there are specific punishments or they have been specifically mentioned as being abom abominable acts and cursed acts. Um, those things, are, they're not wiped out by good deeds. What they are wiped out by is by something we call, that is called in Islam, tawbah. Or in English, it's repentance. SubhanAllah. Anyway, whatever, no matter how, what you've done, no yep. matter what sin you've done, no matter how big or small, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has a door open for you. SubhanAllah. You mentioned before, Malaz, the, the worst of all sins, worse than murder even, is shirk, which yes. is associating a partner or an equal to Allah subhanAllah. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. And, uh, and this, this concept that we mentioned, repentance, even uh, alleviates this sin or wipes out this sin, SubhanAllah. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. Allah, it's, 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 it's beautiful to know that we have uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, our creator, our sustainer, the one that accepts our repentance. I mean, he knows that we go astray sometimes, but he's always got an open door for us. SubhanAllah, it's very different to the qualities of the human. You find with the human that when you've upset someone once or twice or three times, the person gets irritated. They don't want to deal with you. I mean, they don't want to have any, anything to do with you because, because this is the quality of the human. I mean, the human gets, you know, has a certain, certain sort of um, line where they draw and they say, that's it, I've had enough, can't do it anymore. But with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, no matter how many times you sin and you repent, you sin and you repent, you sin and you repent, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has a beautiful open wide door for you to return to Him subhanahu wa ta'ala. However, there's conditions, Mazin. There are conditions, Mazin. What are the conditions, Mazin? Tell us the conditions. Okay, the, the, there are conditions for the, the act of repentance. So, there is a way, and, and it's very handy to know this way, because, you know, again, um, it's very easy to fall into these traps sometimes, so we need to know how to get ourselves out of them. Number one condition, Malaz, in repenting, is to actually stop whatever it is you're doing. Right, so no matter what it is, say drinking alcohol or um, you know slandering and backbiting, or not being able to lower the gaze. Yep, we got to actually stop that act. Yes. Right, so there's the, obviously it's very hard to um, repent to Allah if you're still insisting on doing this act. It's not a valid repentance. So number one thing, you have to actually stop there and then, so that you don't create any more damage, right, yes. to yourself or to anything else. So that's number one is to stop what you're doing. Number two is to actually regret what you've done. To regret that action, to to hate it from within yourself, that you don't, you know, that you, you actually know and realize that this action was a wrong action. You know, you know, as in a lot of people, unfortunately, you find that they, I mean, when, when they speak about their past or about a scene that they've done in their past, they, they actually get excited and happy and they remember moments of happiness. Subhanallah. And, and subhanAllah, this, I mean, this is completely against the, the concept of, of that condition where you say you have to have a regret or a sense of regret where you actually feel guilty about what you've done in the past and you're not going publicly and, and speaking with with people about things that you've done in the past and you feel that you're a bit proud of them it's or, almost or like you're them. reminiscing isn't it like subhanallah, <laughs> well you know it's it's uh, it's good that you say that malaz because you know apart from you know apart from the topic of repentance prophet also taught us that the sins that we've committed we should actually keep them quiet subhanallah. you know we shouldn't be going to um you know advertise them and boast about them okay look there's a wisdom in in certain situations, telling someone, but not, you know, to, to stop them from falling into the same trap. But again, you have to be wise in how much information or how much detail you're actually divulging to them, right? So there's a, there's a wisdom in, in not um, 
really uh, exposing yourself because Allah Azza wa Jal covered for you, you know. So why are you going against, you know, he, he's covered for you and then you've gone against that cover and actually exposes yourself but, intentionally. But if, if you apply that condition of guilt inside, I think it will become very hard for you to expose yourself. Yes, absolutely. So you've got to have that guilt. I mean, really feeling guilty about what you've done and, and having that, you know, that consciousness of, of, of feeling sad and sorrow and, and having these, these emotions every single time you remember that scene that you've, you've, you've done. Absolutely. So that's, that's the second condition is to actually regret what you've done. And the third condition, and it sounds very logical, but it's probably harder to apply, is never to go back to that sin ever again. Or at least to intend sincerely never to go back to that intention ever, uh, back to that sin ever again. Because you know you've now you've stopped what you were doing. You have contemplated and realized what you've done is wrong. And the next step is to not go. You know to intend never to go back to it again. Um, and you know the hadith you mentioned before, um, Malaz, about every son. You know all the son, all the children of Adam are sinners, and the best of sinners are those that repent. Well. Um, with all the sons of Adam being sinners and, you know, at some stage, that implies that, you know, through weakness, through lapse of, you know, concentration or focus, we do fall into traps every now and then. SubhanAllah, Malaz, you know, you mentioned before the hadith about the, uh, you know, all the sons of Adam are sinners and the best of sinners are those that repent. SubhanAllah, and this gives an idea that... Um, when you make that sincere intention never to return to that sin again, yes, you know, you have to be sincere at that point in time. And reality is, being humans, and based on the hadith that we heard, that we may very well slip back into a sin again. You know, the, the Sahaba were, were, you know, of the same. They fell into sins, and, you know, the shaitan could get the better of you. But the point is that when you make that sincere intention, you are sincerely saying to yourself that you, will, you never ever want to fall into that trap again. And reality is, Malaz, if you do fall into that trap again, the repentance, the door of repentance is there for you once again. SubhanAllah. And we're, all, we're all weak humans. Um, and I mean, this is one of the characteristics of the humans that we are weak. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, that the, the, the human was created weak. And this is probably one of the weaknesses that we have is that, I mean, sometimes... We don't realize we're weak. We don't realize that we're weak. That's one of yeah. the weaknesses. And also that, you know, the shaitan sometimes does get the better of us. We, we, we make mistakes all the time. We do sin all the time. But we really need to have in mind that the door of repentance is always open for us. And uh, I mean, Mazen, you mentioned, you mentioned that the first condition is that we stop the sin. Yep. The second condition is that we have a feeling of guilt about the sin that we've done. And the third one is to have the sincere intention to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that you will not return to this sin. SubhanAllah. Now there's one more condition. SubhanAllah, Malaz. You know, the, the first three conditions that we mentioned is between the Creator, Allah Azza wa Jal, and us, His creation. You know, so it's between us and our Lord. But the fourth condition, there is a fourth condition of repentance, and that is when it involves another creation of Allah. So for instance, you've, uh, you've slandered someone or you've backbitten someone, right? Um, you've actually now taken the rights, you've affected the rights of uh, uh, another person. Um, so now Allah Azza wa Jal, at this point in time, Allah Azza wa Jal will say, you know, yes, I'm the most merciful, but at the same time, I'm just. And my mercy does not override my justice. So whilst Allah Azza wa Jal, obviously we know that is Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim, He will forgive you for anything, right? Uh, and this is up to His uh, decision and control to do that. Um, when it involves another person, or another party, then this is what Allah Azza wa Jal says, listen, I've, you know, we, we have to restore the rights of the others before, you know, my mercy takes, takes part here. So justice prevails over mercy here, subhanAllah. Subhanallah, subhanallah. So, um, so what we have to do, we have to, we have to restore the rights of that person. So, if you've taken someone from something, um, you know, wrongly, you should return that thing Absolutely. to them. Absolutely. For instance, theft is a major sin, right? Yes. So if you've taken something from someone, you do your utmost best to actually return that property to that person. Yes. Okay. Now, having said that, Malaz, when you are actually, for instance, returning someone's property that you've taken unjustly. Um, you do have to use your um, wisdom a little bit. Now, when I say wisdom, it doesn't mean, you know, uh, do it if you feel like it. I'm talking about wisdom in, in terms of the action that you're doing, is this going to cause more damage or cause more harm than good? So, for instance, if you actually go and give the property back to that person directly, so that person knows you're the one that took it, right? Is that going to make the situation worse? Okay? Um, if it is, then it's advisable to try and find another way. There's no question about whether the person has to have their rights returned right so that still has to happen but the matter the manner in which you do it or the way in which you do it you can use your wisdom for instance instead of yourself giving it directly back to them 
give it to someone else to give to them or find a way to leave it anonymously with them yes. right so so you have to return the rights no matter what absolutely what you're saying give it a wise approach but give it a wise approach exactly you use be wise in the way that you approach it so that you don't make a bigger problem than you had before the same the same for instance with backbiting backbiting someone speaking about someone behind their back um, whether it's true or not it's irrelevant speaking about someone behind their back um, returning their rights you know now p- returning property is one thing because there's something physical or tangible of but if you're talking about someone what how can you return their rights well the scholars have said one of the ways you can do it is in the same gathering so for instance you can't go back to them you you might not be able to go to them and say listen i said this so, and that such about and such. you such and such because again we're talking about being wise here this might cause more problems than than solving anything but what you can do is pick the same gathering or a similar gathering in that in which you said what you weren't supposed to say earlier and say you know restore that person's honor um you know speak good about them and you know recant or retract what you've actually said um another way which i know which i've heard as well is that for instance you can uh if you know there are not many options available go and uh give some sadaqa on behalf of this person to try and amend that relationship you know so at least on the day of judgment in front of allah azza wa jal you can stand there and say i tried my best to do what i could you know to to restore the honor and the the rights of this person subhanallah, subhanallah. it's really about making uh, a wrong something right and i mean mazan you mentioned all the conditions that are required for repentance repentance in islam and they all have a common a common um a common thing which is sincerity i mean the, you need to have sincerity when you're stopping the sin you need to have sincerity when you feel it with the guilt that you have about that sin that you've been doing and you really need to be sincere about not returning to that to that to that sin and also when you're returning the rights of others of the other, of of creations of people you need to be sincere as well do it for the sake of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to mend anything that you've broken right. you know mazin it reminds me of a beautiful story about uh, when the, the time of bani israel when musa was there alayhi salam with bani israel and they were in the desert and a, a, an intense drought befell them and they they raised their hands towards the sky and asked allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for the rain to come down and subhanallah there was a few scattered clouds in the sky and they disappeared so to, to to their amazement they asked Musa what's the story and then Musa asked Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala what's the story how come our dua is not being answered so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he told Musa that ya Musa amongst you is a sinner that has sinned and transgressed against Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for 40 years subhanahu. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told Musa let this person move himself out of the congregation and only then will I shower you with the rain so Musa told this to Bani Israel and as Musa waited for this man to come out for this man to come forward this man knew himself but he was stuck and he thought to himself if i don't come out come forward then bani israel will die from this intense drought and if i come forward in front of all these people then it's you know it's a cause of humiliation for me so what did he do instead of turning to the people he turned to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with with sincere repentance to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he repented to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he asked allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for forgiveness he asked Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for his mercy and he asked Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive him sincerely with sincerity and and he had tears when he was making this repentance to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala full sincere repentance to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and then in a matter of moments the rain started to come down the rain started to come down and then Musa to his amazement he thought i mean how is this possible the man, the person this person did not come out but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala still gave us the shower still gave us the rain so he asked Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ya Allah how is it that we have the rain without this person coming forward. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told him, Ya Musa, it is because of this person's sincere repentance that I have given Bani Israel the rain. Subhanallah. One person's repentance gave Bani Israel the rain. So Musa alayhi salam being so excited about hearing this, he said, Oh Allah, let me see this person, let me see this person. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told him, Ya Musa, I have covered up his sins for 40 years. Do you think after that sincere repentance I will expose him now? Subhanallah. Subhanallah. When you when you sincerely return and repent to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will forgive you. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will have mercy on you. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will co- will cover up for you and he will not humiliate you. I mean this is a characteristic of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Subhanallah Malaz just goes to show that, you know, this repentance, this is a very powerful tool. And not only does it benefit the person that is repenting and returning to Allah Azza wa Jal and improving his relationship with Allah, it it actually benefits the community as a whole as it was just that that was a perfect example that actually benefits the community because 
it reduces the amount of corruptions, the amount of sins in the, and it improves the overall level of connection to Allah Azza wa Jal Subhanallah. There's a story, Malaz, about, uh, and this is in the time of the Sahaba, in the time of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. A lady came up to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and she said, Ya Rasulullah, I've committed adultery. She said, apply the punishment to me. And, uh, and he turned his face. He did not want to apply the punishment to her. He said, you know, go away, you don't know what you're talking about. So he, he, he wanted to give her an excuse. You know, we spoke before about Allah Azza wa Jal. He's giving, he, he wants to find an excuse to give people Jannah. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam didn't want to apply the punishment to this lady. So he sent her away. He ignored her basically. So she came back later and she was visibly pregnant. And she said, Ya Rasulullah, please apply the punishment to me. I want to repent for what I've done. So he told her, go away. Go away until you've given birth to this child. Months later, obviously, she comes back to Rasulullah and she's holding this child and she's suckling him, she's breastfeeding him. And she said, Ya Rasulullah, please apply the punishment to me. Like she wants to repent. With, you know, she, there's nothing more she wants than to repent. So he says to her, go away, come back when the child is no longer suckling, when the child is no longer dependent on you. So she comes back, I think two years later, and she's holding the child, and in the child's hand is some food. And so she says, Ya Rasulullah, please apply the punishment to me, the, the had, please apply the punishment to me. And she's given, she's made it obvious that the child is now weaned because he's eating food. The Prophet ﷺ was left with no choice but to apply the punishment. He's given her so many chances to go away and rethink her position, but she's adamant that she wants to uh, cleanse herself and repent from this sin. Allah so, so one thing leads to another, and they apply the punishment to this lady. Subhanallah. May Allah, Allah Azza wa Jal give her Jannah, inshallah. And she, and then one of the companions, he actually, I think he actually cursed her or said something bad about her, right? Because of the sin that she committed. And Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam actually said to this companion that this repentance that this lady performed, this act of repentance that this lady re re performed, is actually enough for the entire city of Medina. Allahu Akbar. Allahu so Akbar. the repentance of this one lady is enough to cover the entire city of Medina, subhanAllah. So, you know, uh, look at this uh, wonderful way out, subhanAllah, this tool that we have. To help us, you know, into in in correcting our relationship with Allah Azza wa Jal and correcting ourselves in this dunya before it's too late, subhanAllah. SubhanAllah, what, a, what an amazing ability that we have, I mean, with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to return to Him. And I mean, wallahi, this is a, really an under, underutilized thing that we have in our time these days, in this repentance where, you know, a beautiful door, um, you know, open channel to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala where we can return to Him another time, anytime we want. And you know, this reminds me of another story, Mazin. The story of Thalab ibn Abdul Rahman, who was a young child. He was about 15 or 16 years old in Medina. And he used to run errands for Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And one day he was in Medina and he was walking around and he, he, he accidentally sort of took a, look into, took a look into one of the houses of Medina. And, and, and there was a woman a woman there. She was bathing or showering and, and the curtain blew away. They didn't have any, any proper doors. And the curtain blew away and he actually gazed at this, this woman. And after a moment or two, he realized what sin he has done. So Thalaba bin Abdul Rahman started to cry. And he couldn't resist the temptation and he couldn't resist handing himself returning to Allah to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So he went into hiding. He went into hiding for many, many days. And he used to cry and cry and cry and return to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and seek forgiveness from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Until Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam found that Thalaba is missing. And he asked the Sahaba, has any of you seen Thalaba? And they said, no, Ya Rasulullah. So he sent some of the Sahaba to look for him. He said, Umar and Ibn Khattab and Salman al-Farisi to look for Thalaba. And then they looked for him inside Medina, they couldn't find him. Then they started looking for him on the outskirts of Medina. And they saw some shepherds and they asked these shepherds, have you seen Thalib? Have you seen this person? They said, no, we, have, we haven't seen Thalib, but we know of a, of a crying boy, this crying man. So Umar al-Khattab says, Who, who's this, what's the story of this crying man? They said, this crying man that, that cries all day and comes down at sunset, takes some milk from us and he returns back, but he's just crying and crying very weak, very, 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 very weak in, 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 uh, in stature. And this person is, is really crying. So Umar ibn Khattab and Salman al-Farisi, they waited for him until sunset. Until he came down from the mountains and he started taking this milk. And as he was drinking this milk, he was still crying. In, to, to, the, to the state that his, his milk was mixed with his tears, subhanAllah. <laughs> tears about what? About a simple sin that he's done. So many tears about one, one gaze. One gaze that we take for granted today. One gaze that we, we think it's something normal today. But he, 
he knew the value of this sin. He knew how big it is in the eyes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And he wanted to do anything to return to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Umar and, and Salman asked him to come to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And he didn't want to return. He said, he asked, did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bring down Quran saying that I'm a hypocrite? Subhanallah. Subhanallah. Look, look how the, the Sahaba looked at one sin. A very minor sin that we see it today. So Umar and Salman, they insisted that he turns to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And he was so tired, so weak, so, so fra frail, subhanallah, because of, of, of how much crying he's been doing. And then when he returned to Medina, they took him home and he was sick in bed. They told Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that Tha'laba is at home. So Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam went to visit him. When he entered, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam saw him being so sick and so tired, so he put his head on, on, the, on the lap of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So Tha'laba moved his head and said, Ya Rasulullah, get this head away from you. It's got so much sin, this head. So Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam asked him, he said, what, you, what is it that you want, Ya Tha'laba? He said, I want the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Rasulullah asked him, what is it that you want, Ya Tha'laba? He said, I want the forgiveness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I want to return and repent to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Jibreel came down and told Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, tell Tha'laba that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has forgiven him. When Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam told Tha'laba this, this, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has forgiven him, he had this, this outburst of a cry and he died from that cry. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. And then Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam washed Tha'laba and they, they wrapped him up and as they were taking him to the funeral, Umar bin Khattab Noticed that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was walking on his tiptoes. And he asked Rasulullah, Ya Rasulullah, people have made room for you. Why are you working on your tiptoes? I mean, why are you working like in, in such a manner? People have made so much room for you to walk. He said, Wallahi, Ya Umar, I can't find room to stand because of how much malaika have come down to attend the funeral of Thalaba. Because of his repentance. Subhanallah. Subhanallah, and you find that we see sin as something so little today. The Sahaba saw sin as something so major. We have a door. We have a way out to return to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. No matter how little or no matter how large the sin is, we must repent to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Tubu ilallahi tawbatan nasuha. Return to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and repent to Him in the proper way that He asked you to do so. So, Mazin, I mean, this is a, it's an advice for myself and for, for, for all of us out there to return to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the time to return is now. Don't wait until it's too late. Wallahi, no one knows whether you have a chance later on. Absolutely. Now is the time to return and repent to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Make the intention now. Apply the three or four conditions of repentance in your life and, and make sure that you return to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and you have a clean slate. Subhanallah, this is the aim, my brothers and sisters, to return to Allah azza wa jal clean so that you know we, we are given a clear and safe passage, inshallah, to Jannah and not have to put up not not have to deal with any of the punishment that awaits us you know even no matter how short term it might be you know we we just don't we underestimate how how painful that would be we want to avoid all of that altogether and actually enter jannah inshallah altogether inshallah inshallah I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us from those that repent to Him sincerely. Amen. And I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us, uh, give us the opportunity to repent and give us the sincere repentance that He, he expects subhanahu wa ta'ala. So there you have it, brothers and sisters, um, a beautiful session on the beautiful topic of repentance. Uh, we ask Allah Azza wa Jal to accept from all of us and give us the opportunity to, to repent while we still can, inshallah. Um, it's been a pleasure having you guys. And uh, stay tuned for more shows of the Dean team. Subhanakallahumma wa bihamdik nashhadu an la ilaha illa ant nastaghfiruka wa natubu ilayhi. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi Follow us on Facebook at the Dean Team Sydney radio program and subscribe to our YouTube channel, Dean Team Sydney.